Hey guys, in this video I'm wearing hair thickening fibers from GoFiber, so if you want to try them out, visit GoFiber.com, get a free sample of your choice and see if you like them. Hey hair loss friends, Matt here and this is gonna be a very very interesting video, especially for all you guys who are still not sure whether you should start finasteride or not, okay? You have been reading all of these crazy reports online about guys experiencing these side effects, sexually related side effects, even after discontinuing the finasteride treatment, okay? Precisely, we are going to be looking at a collection of 18 studies I was able to find which could help us better identify the existence or non-existence of post finasteride syndrome based on current scientific evidence. It's going to be pretty comprehensive, but I'm going to try to summarize it as best as I can for you so you can understand it. And to make things easier for you, I decided to create this awesome video timeline in the description below so you can easily navigate between different chapters. Number one, what makes a study statistically statistically significant, simplified. Number two, PFS foundation, what is it and why it has been created. Number three, likelihood of experiencing post finasteride syndrome based on statistics. Number four, studies on existence of post finasteride syndrome and their limitations. Number five, four factors contributing to occurrence of post finasteride syndrome in men. Number six, conclusion and suggestions. Enjoy watching guys. It's important that the study has a high statistical significance. That means it's reliable, the information in it or the conclusion in it can be trusted and it's also legit from the statistical point of view. That means statistically significant studies are usually studies which were conducted on very large samples. I'm not talking about hundreds or thousands, but ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions of subjects in the study. Unfortunately, the studies made on post finasteride syndrome are not like that. Most studies contain as low as 8 subjects or 20 subjects or just 150 subjects in them, okay? Which makes the conclusions a little bit biased. In the future, if you're reading any study, the higher the sample size of the study, the more true or the more truthful the conclusion of the study will be. The smaller sample size of the study, the more questionable the conclusion of the study is going to be, okay? Now, let's talk about PFS foundation for a while, why, what it is, why it has been created and so on. Now, PFS foundation have been created in 2012 as a result of guys uh, reporting uh, some type of side effects from finasteride, like usually sexually related side effects, but also psychologically related side effects, depression and suicides even and stuff like that. 16,000 detected cases of post finasteride syndrome that makes it around 2,000 adverse reaction per year in the last eight years okay it can be also of course even more let it be even 4,000 because not every guy knows about this website who is also experiencing these side effects so it's not gonna report them so let's say it's even more now finasteride have been prescribed between 2007 and 2017 just in the US 70 million times well, let's do a quick math here. Select the average number of yearly reported cases of post finasteride syndrome on this website and divide it by roughly 7 million average prescriptions of finasteride per year just in the US. You see, I'm being modest here and not including yearly prescriptions of finasteride worldwide, which would be much more than 7 million, but unfortunately I couldn't find the correct number anywhere. The result is 0.03% after rounding. That means that 3 out of 10,000 men are likely to report any signs of post finasteride syndrome on this website based on these numbers. This is just for the illustration. The same illustration can be done with 63 reported suicides as a result of post finasteride syndrome between 2012 and 2020, as you can see on this website, which makes it roughly 8 suicides per year as a result of post finasteride syndrome. Now if you divide 8 by 7 million you will see how likely it is for you to become suicidal after taking finasteride. Also you have to consider that yearly average suicidal rates in males just for the USA have been ranging between 20,000 and 30,000 each year on a regular basis ever since 1981 based on CDC's National Center for Health Statistics. 
Guys, let's get into the core of this video and thank you so much for watching because that clearly shows me that you are truly interested in this topic. You're truly, truly interested in making the right decision when it comes down to taking finasteride or not. And now it's gonna get interesting because we'll take a look at the collection of 18 studies and 5,000 online report summary, which could help us better identify the existence or non-existence of post finasteride syndrome based on current scientific evidence. Out of these 18 finasteride related studies observing roughly 35,000 subjects in total, we can make three groups. Group number one, five studies of 1,000 plus participants in each study. Group number two, six studies of 100 to 500 participants. And group number three, seven studies of 1 to 100 participants. The group with more studies of large number of participants will have higher statistical significance as well as higher reliability factor. So let's start with the group number one. The vast majority of these five studies were like four to seven year finasteride studies with almost no post finasteride syndrome evidence. These studies were properly designed with controlled group and experimental group and very low likelihood of selection bias occurrence. The largest one is 17,000 participants, seven year study. Subjects were taking five milligram finasteride daily. No sexually related side effects. Another study of 9,400 57 patients were taking also 5 mg finasteride and only experienced physical side effects like gynecomastia. Another study of 3,040 men, 15% experienced sexual adverse events, but 5 mg dosage was used. It was a 4-year study and guess what? At screening before the start of the study, 46% of patients mentioned some history of sexual dysfunction compared to placebo. These were just some examples of these larger proper population studies done on finasteride and sexually related side effects which did not confirm the existence of post finasteride syndrome. Group number two includes six studies of 100 to 500 participants in these studies. These studies were conducted over one to three year period on smaller samples with higher post finasteride syndrome evidence but also higher selection bias. Subjects were also taken taking unnecessarily high doses of finasteride, which has been shown to induce the risk of sexual side effects as much as five times. In this group, the largest study had 472 subjects in it, ejaculation disorder was 7.7% and impotence 15.8%. Limitations were there included men in their 50s, 60s and 70s with naturally low levels of testosterone and also naturally increasing likelihood of experience some type of erectile dysfunction which is getting higher and higher if you are the man in your 50s 60s and 70s so it has a very high selection bias also there are two three more studies of uh, 326 378 men sexual adverse effects were similar in both studies one to two percent uh, this one study done on a nocebo phenomenon where the group that was informed previously on the possible side effects of finasteride before starting the treatment was three times more likely to experience these side effects also once they started the treatment be careful by reading all these extreme side effects online on forums and YouTube or wherever else because this can also trigger this nocebo phenomenon in you. It can make you feel more anxious and more likely to experience these side effects. And the group number three of seven studies, which I would give an attribute of the least importance when it comes to statistical significance. This group includes again seven studies uh, with no proper study design, no controlled group, so you can't compare the placebo effects with the effects of finasteride on the treatment group. The vast majority of uh, these studies are just small case control studies instead of properly designed randomized control trials. However, here is where the most extreme results can be found in terms of experiencing sexual side effects, permanent erectile dysfunction, persistent libido loss, suicidal ideation and other. In this last group of studies uh, there were also one or two more studies I guess where guys reported penis sensitivity loss even after discontinuing finasteride. Also depression symptoms and even severe depression symptoms are pretty high in these uh, groups of guys. The study of 
54 men we can see sexual dysfunction for six plus years by 20 percent of men on average it resolved after 14 months though it's no doubt that there should be a much larger study done on this phenomenon which post finasteride syndrome is and include all of these variables which should be monitored like penis sensitivity libido loss erectile dysfunction uh, depression and all of these variables which need to be tracked and observed year by year there should be a large enough sample like 10,000 or 20,000 finasteride users there should be a precise period of time defined for this study like five or ten years and the data should be evaluated year by year and at the end it should be evaluated overall so i think that should be an ideal study conducted at this very moment to make many people more comfortable about using finasteride and getting started with finasteride now, after doing an extensive research on post finasteride syndrome, I decided to come up with four main factors influencing the likelihood of experiencing post finasteride syndrome. Number one, finasteride dosage, one milligram versus five milligram per day. The factor number two, susceptibility to sexually and psychologically related symptoms prior to starting finasteride treatments. Number three, nocebo effect, which means knowing about side effects prior to starting with a treatment can increase the likelihood of experiencing these side effects as much as three times after you have started with the treatment. Factor number four, age and androgen health prior to starting the finasteride treatment as far as having healthy testosterone and estrogen levels and it can largely influence the likelihood that somebody will get a side effect on finasteride and also experience the post finasteride syndrome once he has stopped with finasteride now before i jump into the conclusion of today's video please do me a little favor at the end and like this video right now because this is going to be a sign for youtube to promote this video further to other guys like yourself and make it appear in their suggested videos so they can benefit from it. Guys who are unsure about finasteride, who are also scared because of the side effects. And I think this is a really good and short summary which can help you save a ton of time researching online, reading the wrong type of reports and really just makes you focus on the right type of studies with the most importance, the highest relevance and then evaluate the studies with the least relevance at the very end. Although there is nothing wrong with conducting a small study on any issue, such study though has to be interpreted carefully, okay? In my opinion, despite many allegations against Merck who developed finasteride back in the 80s, finasteride still remains the, one of the most effective least expensive drugs or ways how to manage hair loss also in 2020 you can read as many online studies as many online reports or talk to as many guys taking finasteride as you want but you won't know whether you're gonna get any side effects from it unless you try yourself and nowadays it's also important to talk to doctors if you can face-to-face -face is always great if you can't well online is also good there's also a new YouTube channel which I stumbled upon like a couple months ago they're called hair loss show uh, Dr. Natson from Australia they're talking a lot about finasteride as far as dosages microdosing, um, side effects uh, post finasteride syndrome as well and other valuable inputs on this topic uh, sharing their patients journeys on finasteride and stuff like that so you may want to check this channel out as well in case you are interested in doing your own research i can give you the links to all the studies and online reports i was discussing in this video so you can dive even deeper on that there was it for today and see you in the next video also don't forget to join our facebook group hair transplant experiences in case you want to learn something from other guys and exchange your experience with us